What's up everyone, I'm Matt, and the Japan Egg is finally out! 12 new pets all themed after animals that come from the islands of Japan have been added to the game and can be obtained from the new gumball egg that has been added to the nursery. But tell me, how much do you actually know about the new pets that have been added to Adopt Me? Because each and every single one of the new pets is seriously interesting. Well, hey, don't worry if you don't know much, because I'm here to let you in on some interesting facts about every Japan egg pet. Before I get into any of that, remember to subscribe to our channel with the notification bell turned on so that you never miss an Adopt Me video. How else are you meant to get all the real news first? On the subject of firsts, we're starting with the common dugong. Dugongs are pretty interesting to look at with their dolphin-like tails and strange stubby front flippers. They're actually related to manatees, but unlike those animals, dugongs specifically stay in the water. A lot of people refer to dugongs as sea cows. That's because they spend most of their time eating seagrass, whether it's day or night. While they're called sea cows, both dugongs and the manatee are closer to elephants than any other animal. Our other common pet in the Japan egg is the cute little Sudo Mole. Now, you may be wondering about the Sudo Mole's name, and it's not called that because it's sad all the time. It's because this mole can only naturally be found on Sudo Island. Sudo Island is the sixth largest island of Japan, and it kind of looks like the letter S. Just like most moles, the Sudo Mole spends most of its time digging around underground looking for worms to eat. Next up, we're going to talk about the uncommons, and one of those is the tanuki. While the tanuki might look a little bit like a raccoon, they're actually not related to them at all. In Japan, they're known as mischievous tricksters, and in legends, they show up as shapeshifters with strange abilities. In lore, they are known as bake danuki, which is translated to monster raccoon dog. Tanuki are incredibly social animals and will usually live as pairs and take care of one another almost like a human couple would. They share food, raise their pups together, and stay together for life once they've found another tanuki that they love. The Japanese Rhino Beetle, or Kabuto Mushi in Japan, are actually one of the most popular insects in the country, and has been featured in numerous anime, TV shows, films, and even advertisements in Japan. As kids, many people will buy or catch these beetles in Japan, which makes them an incredibly popular pet. The obvious thing that gives the rhino beetle its name is the impressive horn that it has on its head, but this is actually only something that the male of the species has. They use these horns to toss other males around when they're trying to attract female beetles. Before we go any further, it's time for the question of the episode. As usual, when I make a list video, I like to ask you all a question so that I can highlight some of the best answers in the next list. This time, I want to know what your favorite Japan egg pet is and why. Let me know and I'll show off some of your answers next time. We're on to the rares, and the first rare pet we're going to talk about is the ibis. The crested ibis, or toki, actually went extinct in the wild in Japan back in 2003, though it was still around in China. That was until 2008, when the Japanese Crested Ibis Preservation Center tried to reintroduce the species to the wilds of Japan. This project was actually incredibly successful, and while only 10 of the birds were reintroduced back then, there are now 500 crested ibis in the wild living on Sudo Island which is a pretty impressive recovery of the species. The koi carp is probably one of the first animals that you think about when you think about animals that come from Japan. They are kept the world over as pets in outdoor koi ponds and water gardens and are truly beautiful animals. In the modern day, there are a ton of different varieties of koi, but all of them can be traced back to the Niigata prefecture of Japan where they were bred in the early 18th century. They can come in a wide variety of colors, ranging from white to black, red, orange, yellow, blue, brown, cream, and even gold or silver. The most popular koi in Japan is the kohaku, which is a white-skinned koi with large red markings on the top of its body. It was one of the very first ornamental koi carps to be properly recognized in Japan. Now, 
The leopard cat isn't actually a full-on leopard. Leopards, which are most commonly found in Africa, are big predatory cats that are incredibly dangerous. Leopard cats, on the other hand, are much smaller and cuter animals. They're about the size of a normal domestic cat, but they aren't domesticated, so trying to pet one could still end with you losing a finger. These animals are incredible climbers and tend to primarily be active during the night and not the day. While they may not be domesticated anymore, they actually once were many thousands of years ago. In Neolithic China, the leopard cat was actually the very first domesticated species among every type of cat in the world. But they were eventually replaced with actual cats that evolved from the African wild cat. We're on up to the ultra rares, and the first one we're going to talk about is the trapdoor snail. Trapdoor snails, which are also known as mystery snails, are pretty cool as far as snails go. They have awesome cone shells and are often kept as pets to help keep fish tanks and ponds clean of algae. They get their name from the door that they have on their shell entrance. A trapdoor snail can suck itself right back up into its shell. And as this happens, a hard shell plate slots shut over the entrance to keep the snail inside safe. Another bird pet, the red crowned crane, is actually one of the most rare cranes on the entire planet. And seeing one is considered a symbol of luck and fidelity. These birds are incredibly long lived. They can live for up to 30 years in the wild and up to 50 years in captivity, which is seriously impressive. Even more impressive is the fact that they mate for life, which means that they'll likely be with the same partner for 30 whole years, which is very admirable. Most red-crowned cranes will migrate throughout the year, but this isn't the case for the red-crowned cranes that live on the island of Hokkaido in Japan. Due to how isolated they are, they stay in Hokkaido all year long and actually depend on local feeding stations to survive. If you don't like spiders, then you might want to skip this one because it's the spider crab. Spider crabs have the largest leg span of any animal with an exoskeleton, and considering their giant legs, that's probably not much of a surprise. They can reach up to 12 feet from claw to claw, which is double the size of a human. While they look terrifying, they're actually quite gentle and curious animals, and aren't really predisposed to attacking other animals or humans. The only animals that really need to be concerned by a passing spider crab are ones that it can use to camouflage itself from predators. They will often be seen wearing sea sponges and other animals and then burying themselves in the sand of the seabed to avoid creatures like octopuses. We're up to the legendaries now, and the first one I'm going to talk about is the Baku. The Baku is a mythological supernatural creature that is said to devour the nightmares of anyone that it comes across. The legends about the creature say that they were created by the gods by throwing together the leftover bits after they were done making all the other animals on the planet. It is said that after having a bad dream, Japanese children of the past would say the phrase, Baku-san, come eat my dream three times, which would summon the Baku to devour their nightmares. However, if the Baku didn't get its fill, it would also devour their hopes and desires, which adds a kind of scary element to the legend. I doubt our Baku would do anything like that though. The Maneki Neko, or Beckoning Cat, is a figure in Japanese culture that is supposed to bring good luck to its owner. In the real world, these are small statues, often with a bobbing hand, that are made out of ceramic or plastic. The statue is usually of a calico Japanese bobtail cat and can usually be seen across Japan anywhere, from in a shop or restaurant to hotels and even people's homes. The primary belief is that the Maneki Neko first originated in Tokyo or Kyoto in the Edo period of Japan, which was the time between 1603 and 1867. They started becoming highly popular though by the early 1900s. According to folktales, the tradition of the Maneki Neko began when a poor shop owner took in a starving stray cat, even though he didn't have enough money to feed himself. The cat then beckoned customers to come into his shop and bought him much prosperity. It's a cute story. 
right? Well, now you know a little something about every single pet from the New Japan Egg. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more IRL videos in the future, then you need to like this one so that we know you liked it. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe with the bell button on and to follow us on our social media so that you never miss a new Adopt Me video. I'll see you all in the next one.